Welcome back to Flying Dirty. On this video, I'm going to talk about why I love flying IFR and why I highly encourage you to get your instrument rating. I'll also touch on how I feel about the Dyna Skyview and what I am not pleased with. And I'll also cover some of my pros and cons with my two track autopilot. And check out Javier on this video. He is also going to be working and speaking on the radios. And lastly, I'll put a different twist on this video. A few videos ago, my son Javier asked me to put bloopers at the end of the videos. But since I don't make mistakes, I don't have any bloopers. Or do I? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Welcome on board Flying Dirty. Welcome to Flying Dirty. I'm Raul, private pilot and entrepreneur based out of Centennial, Colorado. Come on board with me, my family and friends on our flight adventures across the nation. All right, so here we are at the room. Uh, we're getting ready to leave for Florida and just showing you outside what the weather's like. I've already checked the weather and got my briefing for the uh, flight plan to Florida. But as you can see, this is why your instrument rating is essential because of weather like this. So a little bit of low ceilings. There, uh, the ceiling is about, right now it's showing a broken 600, but it's a very, very thin layer. So let's get ready to eat breakfast and get out of here. All right, so as we're walking back to the uh, airplane from Meridian, Mississippi, as you can see, those are the clouds. Most of them have already burned out but uh, there's still a few remaining and see because of this reason the airport is still showing IFR because you have these uh, scattered low ceilings and uh, and if we did not have an instrument rating we would be stuck here and we wouldn't be able to get out so I encourage you guys to get your instrument rating for sure it's uh, very handy especially for situations or circumstances like this All right guys, welcome back to Flying Dirty. So we got the airplane on. We're about to get our clearance so that we can depart. The uh, airport is still in IFR conditions. There is a few spotty low clouds, but again, this is why it's essential to get that instrument rating. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, do our run up, then get our clearance, and then we'll get ready for our uh, departure. All right, so here we are. We're rolling to uh, runway 22. We've already gotten our clearance. I wanted to record it, but sometimes we are under a lot of concentration and focus whenever we're doing these flights, and I forget oftentimes to uh, press the record button. You guys ready? Yeah. Alright guys, uh, so welcome back, uh, we're rolling, we're rolling. If you watched the previous video, 
When I landed at Meridian, we had a lot of storms in our way, and we actually had to deviate to avoid some of the stronger storms. I was a little uncomfortable going through Meridian. You know, I took a shot, but again, nothing risky. I just basically stayed out of the clouds, no, and, I, and I had all of the clouds in the visual. So that way, uh, one thing I was not going to do is go through any of those clouds. So we're, you know, so that way, if you if you're into the clouds in convective activity, you do not know what that cloud is going to give you. It can shake the airplane up pretty bad. So the one thing you really want to do is just avoid going through the clouds. And as long as you have a visual, then uh, you stay well clear of the area of precipitation and all of that, then you should be okay. So ATC did a really, really good job uh, deviating us. And if you saw in the last video, we had a wall of clouds of rain. It was like a number three one eight five. It was Charlie like River a curtain contact, of rain uh, coming east, down, right, uh, son? Yeah. Airport. It was insane. And the Montgomery but uh, it, it was really cool to just see how they diverted us around that storm. And I was not going to go through that anyway. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. As long as you stay visual and very vigilant, then you can do it safely. Now, here we are again. Here are the storms. You can see the storms uh, right here. Uh, they have moved up to our north. So now storms are not really a threat anymore, except but we'll have to be concerned with, uh, by the time we get to Florida, expect pop-up thunderstorms to develop in the afternoon. That's pretty typical in Florida, especially when you have moisture coming from the Gulf of Mexico like we have right now. I'm a Florida boy. I was uh, raised in Jacksonville, Florida. So I know all about Florida weather. It's uh, very humid and very insane. Speaking of uh, moisture and humidity, I have this towel up here because my wife bought me this towel. Because every time I come down to the south, it's like I'm always sweating. And uh, so she bought me this. So she bought me this towel so that I can wipe my sweat. I don't need this towel in Denver because Denver. There's no humidity to speak of in Denver, so I don't really sweat. And that's the misconception in Denver. In the summertime, it could be 80 degrees, and it's very comfortable. And in the wintertime, it could be 40 degrees, and it's also very comfortable. Now, if you try 40 degrees in Florida, you can't stand it because of the humidity. And the same thing goes when it's 80, 90, or above, you can't stand it. November 3620 Whiskey, contact Montgomery Approach, 124.0. 124.0, 3620 Whiskey. 124.0 zone. Skywest 5295, areas of moderate to heavy precipitation. 12 o'clock and Good uh, job. starting in. Good morning, Montgomery Approach. Saratoga 3620 Whiskey, 7000. Saratoga 3620 Whiskey, Montgomery Approach, up to 3016. 3016, 3620 Whiskey. Talk 4 GM Mike, fly heading at 270 Victor around the Moa. All right, let's change our. Uh, Clock 4 and Mike, contact Atlanta Center, 120.55. We'll Good change day. our barometer. 455, and with that, we have to change our autopilot sink altitude to 740. That way we can stay uh, on hold. So if you can see, it went up to 740. We change our sink altitude to match our barometer, and then it'll keep us down. See how it's going down now to 7,000. So that's how you keep your uh, autopilot uh, synced with your altitude. So uh, Javier is our radio guy, so that's why I let him change the frequency. So he's the one that uh, he's the co-pilot there, learning aviation. I let him steer the airplane on the ramp the other days, and he did a very good job. So as you can see, we took off from Meridian, and that was a pretty cool takeoff. This is again why I do love my uh, instrument rating. So if you can see down there. There is a deck of clouds below us. It's legal to fly over the clouds like this when you're doing VFR, as long as you stay above and away from the clouds. It is actually legal, and as long as you don't go and penetrate the cloud deck to get above them. For that, you need an IFR clearance. However, in IFR, I'm okay doing it. Uh, number one, this is uh, a very thin cloud deck. Number two, I've got all my equipment here that I've got uh, with airports nearby in case uh, I need an airport to land on. Then uh, number three is I have ATC, and ATC can also vector me and help me out a lot. So uh, so that's why I really, really enjoy these instrument flights. And I fly instrument uh, flights, like I said, when I'm doing a cross-country, 99 times out of 100, I'm going to file IFR. 
I just feel a lot safer and more secured, and ATC is watching my back, so uh, so I really appreciate that. And ATC, they really do a really good job. I know they have a very busy job, and, uh, and I think, uh, if I recall correctly, it's one of the most stressful jobs out there. So here we are back. I uh, just wanted to kind of touch a few, uh, touch on a few pointers. So, first of all, I want to talk about the Dynon Skyview. So I love the Dynon Skyview. It, it, it it's uh, it's been a, a wonderful uh, platform. However, Dynon, if you're listening. Let's get this autopilot done for the PA 32s, okay? Because uh, I know that there's a few of us that are out here that have purchased this system, and we're waiting for you to release it. And I know that there's a lot of technicalities that come about uh, getting your FA approvals and all that good stuff. I get it, but we're waiting, man. We're waiting. We need this autopilot done. Now I do have the True Track. The True Track. I, I, I bought it because I was waiting on Dining to release theirs. And this is probably the best, less expensive option for me that was compatible with the equipment that I've got. Not to mention, this true track is completely standalone. So, so you don't really need anything to drive this true track. You can just drive it on its own. It's got its own tracking and all that good stuff. And it does a really, really good job with all of that. As a matter of fact, you can see now we're holding a 7,000. And look at that, 7,000, right on the spot. It is a very good autopilot for when you're doing cross countries and things of that nature. However, not necessarily for doing uh, instrument approaches and stuff like that, because the, the thing with instrument approaches is that TrueTrack cannot handle analog approaches, such as VORs or analog uh, ILS approaches. It will handle GPS approaches, but that being said, they're not approved by the FAA on actual instrument conditions as of yet. I got this one again because on flights like this, it really helps a lot. It really does. But Dinah, I need you to come out with that autopilot. The other, the other reason is because climbing, since this uh, autopilot does not have auto trim, the true track that is, it doesn't really do a really good job on climbs. On descents, it, it, it's fairly better, but it's still not accurate. So in that regards, you know, it's not the best platform for climbing either. But the good thing about Dynon is that Dynon has an IAS mode. So you'll climb on your speed because oftentimes I like to climb a manual climb without the autopilot because the autopilot doesn't climb on IAS mode. And the problem with that is that it can overheat the engine, especially in the summertime. So in the summertime, I like to climb this uh, airplane at around 105 knots so that it keeps air going through the cowling and it keeps all of my cylinders and oil and all of that cooler. If I let this take over, sometimes the speed will go down on the climb and <laughs> I have to take over. That's, that's kind of too close for comfort. But on the climbs, it's rather sloppy, okay? And I'm just being truthful here. Uh, like I said, the true track is really, really good if you're just doing it or using it for cross countries and things of that nature, just like I am doing now. So I just wanted to bring that up and hopefully Dinan is listening. And then the other thing is too, I, you notice that I had to, I had to take my uh, sunglasses off and the reason why is because uh, they were hurting with Dollar these six, six, headphones, they were hurting my ears. Now, believe it or not, these headphones that I have on, I've had these headphones since I started training in Jacksonville back in 1998. These headphones are old <laughs> and they're still, I like this, the way they sound and I like the way that they block the sound, they really do a really good job blocking the sound and keeping everything quiet. And it has a gel covering that, you know, it's pretty comfortable as well, except for when you have sunglasses on. So if any headphone company is out there listening, give me some, some ideas uh, and I'll sponsor your headphones. Uh, if, if, uh, if you have headphones that are comfortable flying with uh, sunglasses, I, I would love to sponsor somebody. So if you're listening out there and you're a headphone company, uh, let me know. And uh, let me know what you got, and I, I, I'd love to, uh, I'd be more than happy to sponsor it. Jacksonville, Pro, uh, Jacksonville Approach, Saratoga 3620, Whiskey 7000. Whiskey Jack Approach, Kinsville 3021. 3021. Okay, 3021. Good job, son.
So there you have it, guys. He did it. He spoke on the radios. He's learning. He's doing really good. He picked up really, really fast. I'm really I'm impressed. I'm maintain one zero. All right, we're punching through these clouds here. Make sure our speed is good because we're going to get bounced around a little bit. We don't want to be going too fast. Okay, here we are. We're, we're going to get back there to the final. 4,000 feet. We do have some scattered clouds. Looks like we'll be punching through some of these. We should have the field in sight here shortly. Tower level 306 holding short, runway 11 at Foxtrot, requesting, ready for departure, requesting uh, abort option. Level 306, flag attack, hold short, runway 11, and your request is uh, noted. Level 306 holding short, runway 11, thank you. Alright, we made it to Flagler. There, there will be pop-up storms and thunder. By the time we get to Florida, there will be pop By the way we get to Florida, you, I have this towel here right now covering all of my... Uh, I have this towel up here. Cup, ah. If you keep those tip, tip tanks... If you keep the tip tanks full, and I know that there's a lot of technical... And I know that there's a lot of technical ability... Ah. And I know that there's a lot of technical... Uh, but anyway, as I was saying, so... What was I saying? I don't know. 